Ladies and gentlemen, the biggest drama in the world of chess in potentially about 15 years and maybe ever has just gotten more interesting. Yesterday I made a video uh, after the transpirings of prior to round four in the Singfield Cup where Magnus Carlsen withdrew uh, and put up a tweet that said if he speaks more, then he will get in trouble. The clip of uh, the football manager, Jose Mourinho. Now, a lot of people ran with this and said that this was an insinuation uh, of, Ma of uh, Hans Niemann, the individual who defeated him in the third round of this tournament uh, and leading the event with two and a half points out of three, was cheating. Now, there are a lot of moving parts here, and I am going to spend the first few minutes of this video just talking. Then we will look at the games of Singfield Cup round five, uh, and Hans also gave an interview today, which I will tell you about right now. So first of all, a couple of theories started circulating. Now, before I jump into any of those theories, what I really didn't like was the fact that we had to wait 24 hours to hear anything from anyone. Magnus put that out and went radio silent. That might be for legal reasons. That might be, I don't, nobody knows. Hans didn't say anything either until the interview today after round number five. I didn't like that. That was weird. That, the whole internet just spun out of control. First of all, there was a theory saying... What Magnus insinuated was not that Hans cheated. That, that's a crazy socially inaccurate, like, what? What do you think he insinuated? You think someone, it wasn't a health reason. The broadcast said that. So that, was, that one didn't make any sense to me. Now the big other one was, well, Magnus has a rat in his team who leaked preparation to Hans Niemann. That one had thousands of upvotes all over Reddit, my YouTube comments. Where did that even begin to come from? Magnus has a tight-knit loyal circle of five or six people. That one legitimately made zero sense. Folks, what? And, and people were like, well, because Hans knew what he was going to prepare. And then people were like, oh, he hacked Magnus's computer. Do you see what happens when neither side provides clarification? The internet just goes bananas. We don't know what to do with ourselves. So the question is this. And there were a few more facts, which Hans elaborated on in his interview today, which I'm about to jump into. So... Hans gave an interview after his game today, a result I will not spoil, and he said live on the broadcast, he said, I've cheated twice in my life. Openly, candidly has said that. He said when he was 12 years old in a title Tuesday, and when he was 16 years old. Hans was born in 2003, all right? His accounts, last used on chess.com, 2020. And the important distinction that he said, so he was, he's correct, 16, 17 years old, the timeline checks out. When he was 16, he cheated in random games. Games to climb the rating ladder, he said, to play against some of the top players in the world. He said he never cheated against Hikaru, always played honestly against the top players. When he was 12, I mean, you're 12, like, can you really, you can't really even judge somebody when they're 16, right? But he admitted to that. But he said, and this was very important what he said, he said that was an embarrassment and that was a shame and he lost friends because of that. And he de has dedicated the last two plus years to being basically a hermit at home. I mean, I don't know if that word has a negative connotation. And he sits, lives out of a suitcase, has studied chess eight to 10 hours a day and has worked tirelessly to clear himself of the past and to be the best chess player that he could be. And to be in the situation that he's currently in under, these, under the spotlight of, and the microscope of potential, you know, massive cheating allegations, he said it was, you know, extremely demoralizing and he was, he was frustrated and wh what is going on? Folks, I feel like we're living in a Black Mirror episode. The thing is, there is legitimately no way to prove whether or not someone is cheating during a chess game unless they are getting assistance from someone in the crowd via signal or from an earpiece or God knows what. I don't know. I don't know. It's all high-tech sci-fi stuff to me. And if you don't catch them, right? So he admitted to absolutely everything that, that he did in the past. And he said, leave me alone. I want to play my over-the-board chess. So... People who are suspicious of Hans cheating over the board. Wh how? <laughs> what is your suspicion? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get into the head of the accuser here. I don't, I don't understand, folks. This is... Uh, uh, but, but then there's the whole flip side. Well, Magnus Carlsen has never withdrawn from a tournament. Magnus Carlsen would... He wouldn't put his reputation on the line, would he? But now that's an entire debate. You know, people are like, well, Magnus is not going to defend the world championship. He's not... You know, he's... Uh, he, he, you know, he left that. Now we see this. Oh, he's going on his Bobby Fischer arc. Folks, is anybody else confused beyond belief? I, I, I'm, I'm glad that I'm only talking for about five minutes. That's what's going on. Hans gave a very candid, honest, open interview, admitting to past mistakes and saying, leave me alone. I want to play over the board chess. I'll play naked if I have to. Hans, we don't want to see that. Not your handsome guy, but that's, we don't want to see any naked chess players. 
Um, uh, he also said he would play in a box f to prevent electrical interference. Like, he has volunteered everything. The kitchen sink. Put him in a bubble. One of those bubbles, you know? Folks, I don't know what's going on. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Th this is completely nuts. Um, yeah. Uh, Hans also mentioned that, uh, you know, his, his future tournament participations are, 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 going to be, uh, are going to potentially be limited because of this. I, I don't know. I, I have no idea what to expect. This is the update. This is the update. Hans Niemann has spoken. Uh, Hans also brought up a couple of things like uh, his accent. He said that, you know, he's, he lives out of a suitcase. He talks to people all the time who English is not the first language. And then he analyzed this position against Firuja. Uh, he had mentioned that the way to beat Firuja is to attack him. Uh, and, you know, that's why he went on this big attack. And he said that his best successes against Firuja have come via attack. That was him analyzing the Firuja game. In the Magnus game, he was uh, saying that the opening and the whole preparation leak nonsense was basically... He was calculating the transpositions between the Catalan opening and the real game itself. And that, you know, that, that, that was his analysis of those two games. Now, is that a fair update? I think I said everything I wanted to say. Um, I don't know, folks. Does, does, do, we, do we owe Hans Niemann an apology? Like, I, I'm saying our community. I thought I'd give a very level-headed take. Everybody else who, like, I, good Lord, I, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. I really feel like we're in, like, a like a dystopian movie where like just nobody knows the truth it, it, it's i for the life of me i just hope hans is innocent but then that leads to a whole nother thing what happens to all the people like to all, oh god oh my i don't even i don't know i don't know anyway the fifth round of action at the singfield cup okay can we just flip the switch real quick we will cover hans neiman's game of course uh we had a petrov Variation from MVL uh, and Nepo. Nepo has played the Petrov a lot. Uh, we had a line where many things got traded very quickly. And I believe this line uh, was seen either in the... Yes, I think it was in the candidates. Uh, and this move F5. Um, or maybe a Wang Hao game recently. Wang Hao played this with the black pieces. So white gets a pretty pleasant position from the early opening. Uh, but black is always equal. You may notice that this could have been taken with check. Uh, but actually, after king h8, white can now no longer avoid uh, a devastating attack. Not a, not a whole lot happened in this game as the players traded pieces and then queens. And uh, MVL tried to advance a little bit on, the, on, on that side of the board, but he, he was never able to break through. Uh, Black's position was extremely solid uh, all the way through. And the players decided to shuffle back and forth uh, between moves 30 and 33. I really kind of get the feeling, and I might be wrong, I really kind of get the feeling that some of these guys just want the res day tomorrow. There's no Singfield Cup tomorrow. It's just... And, uh, yeah, they just want to relax. And I, I kind of don't blame them. I'm exhausted as a spectator of this drama. Um, yeah. So, the next game that I have for you... <laughs> Wesley So versus uh, Levon Aronian. This one was a Catalan. We have seen this opening many, many times. Uh, pawn takes on c4, and now a very forcing line here by black, c5. Castles, knight c6, we have dc, and a, a line that has been studied to the death. And basically the whole point here is that uh, there are two pawns on the queen side for white that are split, and white's gonna try to like inch them forward a little bit, as well as just apply pressure to black's position, who kind of lags in development with this little ugly bishop. So we have knight fd4. Uh, this has been played many times. And Looks like black is just gonna suffer for a long time. I'm tripping over my wires again. So we have rook b8. And uh, a lot of just general improving moves here by Wesley, uh, who's asking many questions. This is a very nice move, by the way. If rook takes e5 is played, bishop f4 is quite nice. And there's no way for black to prevent some losses here. If you play knight to d7, uh, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna give you this check. And uh, good luck ever moving again. Yeah, that'll not work. Um, and uh, yeah, well, Levon kind of equalized. Wesley advanced a little bit on the queen side. And uh, tactics started flying in the position. You'll notice knight takes c5, there is this and this. Bishop a3. A big trade, and we head for an endgame. Where Wesley's going to potentially win a pawn. But... There's forks all over the place. This pawn's falling, this pawn's falling, and it took 43 moves in this one, but another two on three. Wesley had this a couple of rounds ago against MVL, or maybe it was in the last round, 
And uh, the players draw this, like they don't even play this out. This is just a theoretically known draw. Uh, king in three versus king in two is known because you get the Philidor position. If you don't know what the Philidor position is, that's all right. That's all right. I'm really, I, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, the same thing happened in the last video. I, when I boot up these videos, I don't edit them. You know, I one take them. And I, and I just wanted to get my entire point across in the early monologue, you know? Um, and I think I did. I think I said everything I wanted to about the incident, uh, the ongoing developments. And um, yeah, I, the most frustrating thing to me and probably to many of you is the fact that Theories are going to spiral out of control until the, we have truth or clarification, and I don't know if we'll either ever have both or either. Like, once negative information is out there in something like chess, like, oh, he's cheating, you can't disprove that. Because if you're already not cheating over the board, right? Uh, yes, Hans talked about the online stuff, but if you're not cheating over the board, like you can't disprove, like you can't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you got, what, are you gonna strip naked, right? Isn't it? Oh man, but if it, oh God, I don't know. I don't know, only, only they know. Mami Diara Fabiano, okay, now we're, you're in for a very exciting game. Are you ready for this game? How many of you are here at 11 minutes? Let me know, put a little timestamp, let me know. I like to read the comments and see what's up. This is the Rogozin. this is one of the most Aggressive Queen's Gambit decline variations. Takes, takes, and now Bishop F4. Now, there are many ways for Black to play this position, and Fabiano Caruana chooses the I'm going to punch my opponent in the face variation. Knight E4 attacks the Knight. This defends. And here we have seen this. We've seen G5. Fabiano plays a move that has never been played, I think. It's been played twice. Like, literally over the board two times, maybe. Uh, the best move here for white is h4, which if you play, you should be... You know what? I always make jokes like if you play, you know, you should be checked for fair play. I, but given the ongoing stuff, I don't think I should make jokes like that. Um, knight d2. The point of this move is to block the pin and try to trade the knight off. Fabiano's like, sure, what's up? Nice rook. Shock's like, I'm not going to give you the rook. Castles. All right? And now, you know, any normal person here would just finish their development, right? No, g5, f5. I'm just going to push all my pawns in front of my king. White is threatening to trap... Black is threatening to trap White's... By the way, where is Magnus? Like, I'm sorry. Like, I just have so many... Is he still in his hotel in St. Louis? Did he leave? Is he on a plane? Is he, like, talking to his legal team? You know what? Like, what... What is going on? I, it's... Oh, my goodness. So many questions. Anyway. Um, yeah, look at this. I mean, what is... The, what, what the... It looks like two 600s are playing this game. No disrespect. I mean, it just looks so goofy. It's not bad. It just looks goofy. Well, you guys want to know something insane? So, Shock sacked this pawn and then went to win it back with knight f1, knight takes e3. Fabiano played c5, which is the top engine move. After this, takes, takes, and the king gets hunted out here. You guys want to know something completely insane? Fabiano Caruana had this entire position in his preparation. 21 moves. And in this position, Fabiano had more time on the clock than he started with. Because they get bonus time every move. How savage is that? Isn't that insane? What an absolute psychopath. <laughs> like, what a, what a savage. Um, and it gets even more interesting because here he plays queen takes f1. He sacrifices his whole queen because if this, then bishop g4... King e3 and rook f4, and there's no way to stop losing your own queen. But there actually is. You sack with check, and then you go here. And after bishop takes d4, you have this, and at least you lose it, but you get everything. <laughs> what even is that? Oh my god. Okay, well, Mamidyarov goes here. And, uh, you know, as sometimes happens in these positions, uh, if your opponent survives the absolute minefield of preparation that they have to walk through, it's going to be a draw. And uh, it's rook and bishop and four pawns each. And uh, opposite colored bishop endgames where the balance is one pawn and even sometimes two is still a draw. So the players just make a draw. But I mean, folks, can you, can you, can like, what, what are we, what, are, what? This was in his prep? 21 moves? This is, I mean, the, come on, the, now you see... What is this rating Fabi has? 25, 60, uh, 25, Jesus Christ. I'm not trying to give, take away 200 more points. 27, 60. Um, come on, he's supposed to be, he's supposed to be 2,800. Like, Fabi, please, the whole world's cheering for you. Get up there. Like, 
you know, people, the whole world cheers for guys like Ding Luren, you know. I feel like the whole world also che cheers for Fabiano Caruana. Like, no one's ever sat down and went, I hate Fabiano Caruana. I don't know, maybe some people have. But uh, I feel like the whole world cheers for him. Anyway, this was a draw. Even though it was a bit more exciting than the others. Uh, it ended with uh, Kings, but they made a draw. Um, opposite colored bishops, they played out the whole thing. And like good sport, look at this very funny move. Bishop c4, <laughs> trying to trade the last pawn. Um, yeah, so the last game was the Hans Lehmann game. Um, and I think I've said everything I wanted to say about Hans. Very honest and candid interview today. And um, I have no idea what we have to expect in the future. I mean, is Magnus never going to play in a tournament where Hans plays? Is somebody actually going to pat down Hans? Or Like, how, do, how does that even work? I've heard stories of big tournaments where uh, people have been accused of cheating, went into a bathroom with a tournament director of the, you know... It, it wasn't it wasn't anything suspicious and then uh and, and then like stripped into their you know underpants but like that just seems absurd anyway uh this was a line chosen by Lanier Dominguez and this line has been played many many times but here we start kind of drifting so Hans plays knight e7 and the main move here for white is knight f1 uh because if white tries to take advantage of the fact that the knight has moved out of the center black actually will go back to c6 is fascinating uh, and as Hans described in his interview after the game there was a very similar game between Alexienko and Caruana in the candidates uh, before Nepo won not <laughs> Nepo has won two the first time uh, but we had bishop b3 and Hans played a new move he played c5 this was just a complete novelty I have 55 games in the database and this is the best move um, so knight f1 bishop b6 but Lanier seemed to have gotten the better of, uh, of the opening. And I, I think Hans must have misevaluated something because he got, he got clamped. Okay, I'm talking Kawhi Leonard, fourth quarter defense. Black has no play here at all. Um, the reason for that is if Black plays the very typical plan of putting the knight on f4, uh, like let's say white just, I don't know, plays king h2, like you, something like this, then Black, well, okay, that's kind of stupid, like rook a3, then Black is going to sacrifice on h3. Right, like, this is black's major plan. And then queen h3 and some big attack and probably checkmate pretty soon. The problem with that is white is going to nerf that before it even happens. So you now cannot play knight f4. If you take with the bishop, you cannot sacrifice here. If you take with the knight, you're forced into a trade. So Lanier shuts down the major kind of play point that black has here. Uh, and Hans haters must have been rejoicing because, you know, he just got not a great position after 20 moves. Uh, but then he started fighting back. So he traded off his worst piece. Something obviously didn't work in the position. Um, and then, you know, rook f5, rook b1. And Lanier was just in the driver's seat. I mean, he rerouted the knight. He closed the center. And he just got an absolutely beautiful and breathtaking position. Like... Black here is playing fortress defense. So he's putting both rooks like a, you know, like a, like a laser beam on that rank. And he's like, you just can't break through. And Lanier's like, yeah, I can. I'm going straight down the middle. So you can't guard this. If you try to, uh, then I'm going to go out this way. So we get a position here after 35 moves. Where, I mean, Hans is just completely lost. And this is the position. Um, Lanier has to give a check here and hit the king. And basically, no matter where black goes, there, you know, black's in a lot of trouble. You really don't want to go here. That just seems ridiculous. And the reason for this is a combination of this and this. There's just no way to stop this. You could do this, but I'm going to play rook b7, right? So um, maybe not right away, but uh, maybe I'll like just try to bulldoze you down the middle. Uh, yeah, so for the life of me, I do not understand. Like All this chess tournament drama aside, I don't really understand why 96 wasn't played. Um, there's like some variations here. Hans, uh, in his interview afterwards said he didn't think he was immediately lost. I can only imagine that he also did, you know, he must have, yeah, Lanier must have also thought that, but Stockfish is yelling at both of them going, are you both completely nuts? It's plus five. Like Stockfish just thinks that Black's position is completely lost. Lanier goes for a rook endgame instead, and he didn't take because I guess the king was coming. I guess Black just activates his king and despite being a pawn down, has very good activity. So instead of that, Lanier goes for a rook end game and all his winning chances disappear. So, yeah, I mean, Hans has been on the better side of advantage in four games out of the first five in this event. 
um, at some point. But this game, Lanier showed up with very, very nice preparation. Hans kind of played the first different move and, uh, and had to defend a worse position, but he defended and Lanier had one chance on like move 36 and he never took it. So this game also ended in a draw. Uh, in a nutshell, the games that we saw today were not the most exciting. Under normal circumstances, when there are four draws in a chess tournament, you know, the recap is kind of boring. And today's recap isn't boring as much as it's really hard for me to speak about. Because uh, I... I'm just so concerned with what's going on in the chess world. Um, I said this in yesterday's video. One of two things is the reality. Magnus did what he did, right? He put out that cryptic tweet, and there actually is legitimate cheating, not just the online stuff from being, you know, a silly teenager. Or he put that out, and there is no cheating. And neither one of those is a good situation. I, I'm, you know what I mean? I, there's no winners here. So, and the internet's got to stop with these prep league theories, guys. Like, I, I was shocked at how many people who know, you know, it reminded me of my own drama. Some of you may not even know about this. I mean, how many of you remember the whole uh, Indonesia thing in early 2021? There's articles about it. I, it was basically a case where I played someone who was banned for cheating, uh, and then I was accused of having mass reported them because I was mad that I lost to them. But they, at some point, won 27 games in a row with an average score of 95%. You know what I mean? Then they went live and they played some... It was a whole story. But in the early stages of that, when nobody really knew a whole lot, I was being accused of so many different things, but nobody had the full facts. And right now, I feel like we're, way too many droves of people are forming too many facts and, and theories and whatnot. But the major problem is we are not getting any clarification on either side until today. Today, Hans Niemann spoke his truth. Now we have clarification from one side. We need something from, T from Team Magnus. I mean, we need something. Uh, and I, and I, think, I think this is only going to get crazier. I, I mean, we, we, I don't know. Hopefully this was a good recap. Hopefully I spoke as honestly and fairly as, on both sides as I could. I don't know what else to say. We're about to find out. Uh, tomorrow we have a rest day from the Singfield Cup. And I think God, I think even, even God, God, even God needs a rest. <laughs> the chess gods need to take a smoke break, right? Uh, I'll see you all tomorrow for regular videos and in a couple of days for uh, back to the Singfield Cup. Get out of here.